Lynette is now changing every signature on court documents so it can't be used against her in a defamation case in the federal courts. We've shared in the past that we're going to federal court against Lynette and Crook. Two independent cases, two independent lawsuits for defamation, extortation, and a bunch of other things. Now, in defense of this, both Lynette and Crook have filed motions independently, but the reality is this. They did it together, and they're pro se, but somebody definitely helped them, and that's illegal. The most interesting part is Lynette is signing all court documents now with completely and totally different signatures. None of them after we've called her out on her signatures that match the signs that call me a child rapist. None of them after that match one another. Only everything before that matched the signs. I hope you understand what I just said. Everything after that, she signs it, it's different. She signs another one, it's different than the one she just signed. She signs another one, it's different than the previous two. She can't keep consistency trying to actually sign things. Now, they filed motions to have this federal suit dismissed. And I'm going to share that motion with you. And then I'm going to share my motion as well. Now, they want this out of federal court. At a bare minimum, they've got to have $30,000, $50,000 to get a federal lawyer. And Silver Scam is not licensed for federal court. So let's take a look. They both have the same motions saying the same things. And so we'll take Crooks, for example, here. Defendant John Crook, motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. Right here, you can see it right there up the top. Lack of jurisdiction. So, um, what does that mean? Well, to be in federal court, you have to have two individuals, the plaintiff and defendant, that live in different states. Now, my home state is Ohio. Just because I do the winter and snowbird in Florida doesn't mean that I don't live in Ohio. I am an Ohio resident by all legal definitions. So, He's going to say here, well, let's just see what he says here. The defendant, John Crook, moves to dismiss this action pursuant to federal rule of civil procedure 12B1. Well, let's face it. Crook has no idea what federal rule of civil, civil procedure 12B1 is in the first place. He did not do this on his own, even though he states and signs that he did. That's illegal. By all means, this is going to come out in the depositions and it's going to come out in federal court. Again, all these two do is further incriminate themselves with every th action that they take, every video they take, everything that comes out of my, their mouths further incriminates themselves. He says there is no federal question and so no jurisdiction under jurisdiction under 28 U.S.C. Uh, 1331, the defendants reside in Otter Creek, Florida, and so does the plaintiff. That would be me. I'm the plaintiff. They're the defendants. I am suing them in federal court for extortation, defamation, and a few other things. Therefore, there is no diversity jurisdiction. Even if there were diversity there are no allegations identifying specific damages of any kind of any amount or an amount of controversy over $75,000. Now, to be in federal court, you have to have damages over $75,000. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> I literally have a civil protection order against John Crook. And where's it issued from? My home state, Ohio. I have one against Lynette. Where's it issued from? My home state. Ohio. Who has jurisdiction? My home state, Ohio. Not only that, I have legal bills between Ohio and Florida right now in this whole situation, over $125,000. Now, last I checked, and I'm not Mary Mary, math is scary, but that's over $75,000 in damages thus far. So I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure those who can do math and those who actually comprehend common sense realize that this is the biggest joke in the world. All right, so then he goes on to say, for all the foregoing reasons, the complainant should be dismissed for lack of federal court jurisdiction. 
And he's stating, particularly, Jeremy can't be in federal court. He's not a resident of Ohio, and there's no damages over $75,000. Well, we're going to get to that. A supporting memorandum follows the required by Local Rule 7, 1E. Uh, when's the last time Crook knows any laws or rules? This is the same guy who's out there, it, literally, literally in Ohio court, asked George, were you there when I pulled a firearm? He used another word, an un out of my pocket. I pointed it at Jeremy and brandished it at him. He's literally asking the question why he incriminates himself. And she goes, no. Well, how do you know I did it? Well, first of all, you just said you did it. Uh, second of all, it's on video. All right, but let's keep to this, okay? Federal court. Memorandum supporting motion to dismiss. They want this gone, and it is not going away. As a matter of fact, more people are going to be filing against them in federal court. Uh, federal rule of civil procedure 12B1 provides a party may assert that the following defense by motion, number one, lack of subject matter jurisdiction. I'm not even sure what that has to do with trying to dismiss it. Federal jurisdiction depends on there being a federal question or a diversity of citizenship between the plaintiffs and the defendants. In other words, you have to live in different states. C-28 U.S.C. 1331. 28 U.S.C. 1332. You think Crook and Lynette know any of this stuff? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Definitely not. They We've seen court had paperwork. help. Okay? Which means... They just further incriminated themselves because they did not, what's that word that Thomas likes, disseminate, or they did not disclose who it was that helped them. So they're already in huge trouble in federal court. A federal court should inquire into whether it was a subject matter jurisdiction at its earliest possible stage in the proceedings. And they're quoting University of Southern Alabama versus AM Tobacco Company, 168 F3D 405 410, 11th Circuit, 1999. Although the complaint alleges jurisdiction exists under both sections, the complaint in this action fails to establish either basis for federal jurisdiction. First, there are no federal claims, only state law claims. See complaint. All right, makes no sense whatsoever and doesn't even, it's not even applicable to, to what we're doing in federal court. Second, although the plaintiff, Jeremy Hales, alleges he resides in Ohio, he resides in Otter Creek, Florida, as established by the affidavit of Lynette Preston attached with this memo. Um, hold a second. I'm actually reading Crooks and they copied each other and he screwed up and he put, he forgot to delete Lynette's name. <laughs> it wasn't he, it was whoever helped them. He forgot to delete Lynette's name. This should say affidavit of John Crook. Okay, so this is Crook's I'm reading. This should say John Crook, and it says Lynette. They screwed that even up. Okay, attached with this memo. Third, the complainant fails to allege any specific damages of any kind. By the way, any damages will be shown and declared within federal court. You don't have to show it before federal court. So again, this is just complete and total nonsense and stupidity. And thus does not meet the amount of controversial requirement under 28 USC 1332A. By the way, I, I have to say it, I love that morons keep helping them incriminate themselves further and further and further. Whoever helped them put them yet in another legal situation of liability. And that's all that happens again. And it, yeah, I got the proof. I got the, I'm reading it. I got the receipts. I got the timeline. I got the screenshots. All right. Third, the complaint fails to the alleged. All right. We go, we go to law. It merely, it merely conclusively, you know, this is a big word. Now I can't say this word and that's normal for me, but, um, crook saying this word. Do you think Crook actually knows what that word is, let alone being able to pronounce it? I don't think so. Conclusitorily. I'm not sure what kind of word that is, but um, it alleges that the statutory minimum of 75000 for each of the six state law counts with no specific allegations establishing how the plaintiff was damaged or how any amount of damage is established. Well, it's pretty easy to prove it. I have 
bills and invoices that I've already paid well over $125,000. And it goes on in regards to case law. All right. But by the way, the case law that they're even quoting doesn't even apply to what they're stating. So let's get into this affidavit. Does it even exist or is it a made up case law? Well, no, I didn't dig that far. I mean, I actually have a life and things to do. So let's keep going. Uh, there is no factual basis for the court to conclude that the jurisdictional amount is satisfied in this case. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. At the pleading stage, the party invoking federal jurisdiction bears the burden of establishing the amount of controversy required by a preponderance of the evidence. Where jurisdiction is based on a claim for indeed some kind of damages, the red cab company. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're going with more case law here. That they don't listen. You know, Lina and Crook never wrote this. These are the two that can't say a single sentence in Ohio court or Florida court without incriminating themselves. Uh, federal jurisdiction bears the burden of proving the preponderance of the evidence that claim to which it's being ju just just uh, jurisdiction meets the jurisdictional minimum. Tapscott versus MS Dealer, Server Court, la, 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 la. all right, that's just a bunch of, bunch of stuff. Because there's no federal question, no diversity, meaning they're stating that I live in Florida, that's my home state, and no allegations establishing the minimum amount of controversy, it's pretty easy, here's the bills for, for uh, all my legal fees, uh, the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Florida lacks jurisdiction and should be dismissed and dismiss this case. Defendant John Crook. And guess what he didn't do? He did not state who actually helped him. Illegal from the get-go. From the moment this was filed and the court received it, he is now under even more illegal liability. Now, this is kind of funny. When we got it, which, by the way, here's the affidavit of John Cook. If you remember, it said, oh, I'm going to show the affidavit of Lynette Preston. Uh, Lynette Preston Forgot to remove John Crook, whoever typed these forgot to move the name Lynette Preston. And but the affidavit does say John Crook. So they screwed up the paperwork. Pretty stupid. Federal court, pretty dumb. Number one, I'm the named defendant in this action. John Crook. Number two, I can attest that the plaintiff Jeremy Hales resides in Florida and not Ohio. That's interesting. Number three, Mr. Hales has been continuously living in Otter Creek, Florida for at least six months. Prior to the date of this affidavit, he has been absent only a few days. Number four, this is the best part. <laughs> I know this. Wait, 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 go back. How would they know you've only been absent a few, couple days? I thought they They're don't watch, stalkers. I don't think they, they said they don't watch your videos. Number four, George, just wait. Just wait, be patient. I know this from seeing his YouTube videos. Right there. I wow. know this from seeing his YouTube videos. Wow, we have more evidence of perjury. By the way, Lynette says the exact same thing. I know this from seeing his YouTube videos. Six months of YouTube videos. I know this from seeing YouTube videos. When? When she's under oath. I've seen maybe three, maybe four. She's getting... They're doing Mary <laughs> math because we got here October It doesn't even matter. They're, they're in so much trouble. They are in so much trouble for all the lies, the complete and total lies. And then Crook signs his name, okay? Now, you may be thinking, oh, man, you file a case in federal court. What does that look like if Crook and Lynette, that's two separate cases, they are both going to have depositions, two days for Lynette, two days for Crook. We are doing it at a federal court with a judge right there, making sure that they are held accountable, that they can't pull any of these pranks and these jokes that they've done in the county depositions. Oh, uh, I, can, I can't even... You want my honest opinion? I believe the federal judge is going to throw them in contempt of court during the depositions. I'm not even sure they're going to make it to the hearings. But let's share with you what my response is to their motion to dismiss. Here's my affidavit in response, and it's 35 pages. And we're not going to go over all 35 pages because some of that is evidence. And so, but, oh, is this redacted or unredacted? Maybe I can get through this in 15 minutes. 35 pages in 15 minutes. Mark Feather! By the power of Mark Feather, I will get through this in 15 minutes. All right. Affidavit of Jeremy B. Hales. You love, George loves saying Jeremy B. 
Happy Hales. And I, I don't do. know why. I don't know why she likes that. She doesn't like ketchup, but for some reason she likes saying Jeremy B. Hales. She'll be like, Jeremy B. Hales. And that's when I'm not even in trouble. Before me, the undersigned notary public personally came and appeared. Jeremy B. Hales, who states that I, Jeremy B. Do you want to say it, George, since you like saying it more than me? She's shaking her head no, but not the camera, so nobody knows what she's saying. All right, I, Jeremy B. Hales, being duly sworn, hereby depose and say, number one, to my knowledge, all of the facts stated in this affidavit are true and correct. Number two, I am over 18 years of age. That could be up for debate sometimes. Uh, but I do have male pattern baldness in the shape of a heart or the shape of a fart. It depends on what you see when you see my head. Um, it, you know, it's like looking at a cloud. You, you literally could see anything. I'm curious. You know, Let us know in the comments it's what you see. The hurricane symbol. Let us know what you see in the comments, and <laughs> this is going to be interesting reading this afterwards. Uh, I'm over 18 years of age, and I'm fully competent to make this affidavit, and I have personal knowledge of the facts stated within this affidavit. Ah, number three, I am the plaintiff in this lawsuit. I am bringing the lawsuit against John Crook and Lynette. All right, page two, number four. The affidavit is submitted in support of the memorandum in opposition to defendant's motion to dismiss based on federal R civil P 12 B one, which they have no clue what even is. Okay. Number five, I am one of the fortunate people who have been able to use the internet and uh, with my YouTube channel, what the hails. Okay. And I, and, you know, at this point, I actually, I'm not so sure I am fortunate because I never in a million years, not that we would ever be around that long. Well, maybe, do you think what the Hales channel will be around for a million years? Like long after we're gone? Mm -mm. All right. Well, uh, so I never in uh, five years that we've been on YouTube thought that we would be stalked and be in this type of situation. So I'm not sure if I'm fortunate or unfortunate. I think it's that double-edged sword. But in the affidavit, I do state, and I did write this, nobody else wrote this for me, <clears throat> that I am one of the fortunate people who uh, use the internet and have a channel with the hails. And number six, I've always had my domicile in Ohio. That means that's where I reside. That is my hometown. It's where I vote in the presidential elections. I pay taxes, federal taxes, the whole deal, okay? So my domicile, and, and it is in Ohio where I have my permanent home. And I have always lived in Ohio. It's the state where I was born in 1977. And I intend to keep my Ohio domicile. My children live in Ohio. Now, there are many who say, Jeremy, why haven't you changed to Florida? There are better business incentives and tax incentives and the whole deal. And that's true. There are much better incentives from moving everything to Florida. And I haven't based on, listen to this last line, my children live in Ohio. That's it. That's the reason. Family is more important than money, period. I will not change the state where I reside because of my children. And can I save tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah. Will I? Nope. My kids are residents of Ohio. I will remain a Ohio resident as well. Number seven, in December 2020, I purchased a non-homestead property. In other words, you may think of it as vacation home. It's really what it is. In December 2020, I purchased a non-homestead property in Otter Creek, Florida for business purposes. And this location has better weather during the winter months that than exists in Ohio. And I don't have to shut down a significant part of my business during the winter months, given that I have the Florida location for my businesses. Now, you understand that I'm in the resale business. And I love storage units. And I love the treasure hunt. And I love finding items that I can then reconnect with people who have memories towards them. For example, oh man, I'm looking for an example. Dukes of Hazard, right behind me. All right, you. Dukes of Hazard, right behind me, that RC. I was just at a toy show, and that Dukes of Hazard RC was in the box $900. Now, we found that in a storage unit, and I'm guessing that it's worth roughly $300, probably more, in the condition that it's in. Now, I didn't have that growing up, but I know some people who did. And they would love to own that and be reconnected with their childhood memory. I always tell people we don't sell stuff or items. 
It's memories. And so one of the things I, I like is Garbage Pail Kids, Ghostbusters. It's memories of growing up as a kid. And so better storage units in Florida, better weather, better business. I don't have to mess around with slush, ice, hail, snow. Pulling a trailer. Pulling a trailer. By the way, I've pulled trailers in Ohio and have been on the phone with George during snowstorms and have been in a ditch and been like, ah! And somehow I've gotten out of those ditches. So number eight. Thus, since 2021, my YouTube channel has afforded me the ability to split my work time between Otter Creek, Florida and Ohio, okay? Number nine, on occasion, I use my platforms to benefit charities and do various giveaways to help deserving people. Part of my internet fame has led also to negative attention from people who claim to be fans, in quotes. Now, you understand that a lot of the hate that George and I get, and this is one of the things I told George when we first started, 95% of the people are going to love you, 5% of the people are going to hate you. No matter what you do in life, focus all of your attention on the 95 who love you, and they'll love you even more. Forget the 5%. They're just, they're going to hate everybody. That's who they are. They're miserable. They want to make everybody else's life miserable. It reminds me of an individual by the name of Marla Hughes, or Marla Hughes in Bronson, Florida. She's a horrifically horrible, miserable person who people do not want to be around or know, and she wants to make everybody else's life miserable. Well, we don't want to be around those kind of people, which is why we don't associate it with her. So you always want to give all of that attention, vast majority of it. Now I bring up Marla, you're probably going, well, why are you talking about Marla? Marla is going to be a part of court cases. So Lynette's a part of the court case. Crook's a part of the court case. Never did we ever think that these negative people would ever bring things to the point to do illegal things and practice unprotected constitutional they speech. They both threw her under the bus. Unprotected. Marla's been a part of it. Victoria Munsell's been a part of it. There's a handful of people that are a part of it. And so... Uh, attention from people who claim to be fans. Uh, and if you go, oh man, Jeremy in his affidavit says internet fame. The reality is, I mean, it's not like being a movie star. I mean, I know you're not looking at me right now going, dang, Brad Pitt. Mm, I want to see him in the next movie. But it is to the point where George and I go out. And if we go to Walmart, honestly, just about anywhere, there will be somebody say, hey, I watch you all the time. Or can I get a selfie? I was just, yeah, can I get a selfie? I was just at a toy show. I don't know how many people stopped and asked for selfies and said hi. And we're very appreciative of the, the video. So the aspect of fame is, is those who recognize you and appreciate what you do. It doesn't mean that you're a movie star living in L.A. because Otter Creek is not Hollywood by any stretch of the imagination. And Hollywood could never write or come up with something as odd as Otter Creek. All right. Number 10. Defendants Mr. Crook and Ms. Lynette are people who started off as fans by their own words. Okay, This is their own words that are in writing that will be used in court and are now stalking me and my partner. All right, page three. Number 11, Mrs. Preston or Lynette has had her own YouTube channel since 2020 and seeks donations from the public on an almost constant basis through PayPal, Venmo, her private Facebook pages, which by the way, all these donations, hmm, you think she's actually reporting that? She's on disability to the government. No, she's not. Oh, by the way, she's using the 501c3, the turtle rescue, in which turtles and tortoises need rescued from, as a front, I mean, in my opinion, literally to launder money and, and using the money illegally. Uh, but that is coming down the road as well. That is something else our legal team is working on. And so, uh, number 12, Mr. Crook has also many Facebook pages. Lynette and Mr. Crook claim to run a sanctuary for tortoises. However, in October 2021, they moved and brought property that's directly across the road from my Florida winter location from my business. Now, you know, as well as I know, they did this intentionally in an aspect to try and gain money, to try and gain fan support, and to try and get free labor. And they stalked me. Number 13, initially I believed Mr. Crook and Lynette were fans, but they continued to ask for financial help for their nonprofit despite having moved into a less habitable 
place for the animals. As I continued to say no to the request beginning in February through March 2023, the behavior became more and more torturous, unstable, and dangerous. So if she lived and he lived in a beautiful remodeled home, oh my goodness, how many times have we had to hear that, with a life-threatening disabled child, how many times have we had to hear that? I'm disabled, Crook's disabled. How many times have we had to hear that? The child's and, disabled. You know, I literally just said that three sentences ago. Um, and you're going to move to Otter Creek of all places on a dump? And the original, the original plan was to live in a tent. Yeah, live in a tent. Who she claims to rug addicts that were living on her property in exchange for food that was rotten food from when Dixie stole along with another tortoise. Oh, but then she says in court that there's no rug addicts. There's never been any rug addicts. And the problem is for her is we have all the screenshots and the receipts and the proof. Let's go on. All right. 14. Point number 14 in April 2023. Crook posted online a large collection of the letter S and then we're going to say X toys and stated I was selling them as my items. Crook also made threats about posting pictures of his Tic Tac in my partner's mouth. Somebody's got two inch pipe envy. That's all I'm gonna say. Serious pipe envy. Big pipe envy. I'm just saying I got the biggest pipe in Otter Creek. That's all I'm saying. All right, number 15. In May, 2023, my attorneys in Florida sent Crook and Lynette cease and desist letters. A copy of being attached to my complaint. That's why this thing is so big because of all the proof. But this did little or nothing to curb their behavior. As a matter of fact, that cease and desist only went on to increase their behavior to the point of setting up signs, which we're going to talk about here. Number 16, in response to their motion to dismiss, which by the way, it will not be dismissed in federal court. Number 16, in May through June 2023, as outlined in my complaint, Lynette posted signs all over Otter Creek, Florida, calling me an Ohio rapist. We're not going to rap right now. Defaming me and asking for others to run me and my partner back to Ohio. Now, here's the interesting point of this. They're claiming, because they watch all my videos for six months straight, that I'm a resident of Florida, yet Lynette is the one that contacts my mayor in Ohio trying to run me out of my Ohio village. Hmm. Interesting, right? All right, number 17. Since May 2023 to date, Crook and Lynette have created and maintained multiple online groups dedicated to hating me. And Mr. Crook has made, we're going to use the letter S, and then we're going to say actually explicit post about me and my partner. Particularly, he wants to put all kinds of things in the exit only, the backside, uh, parking in the rear. I think you get what I'm saying. The man is obsessed with the bung hole. All right. Number 18. In August 2023. In other words, we've been harassed on that level constantly and nonstop. And frankly, let's face it. Lynette's looking for her eighth husband as well. And I'm not on the market for ex uh, pole dancers slash <laughs> ministers, which she is not a minister. All right. Number 18. I thought she was a corny minister. Oh, okay. Well, she's a, she's a corn stripper. You got you to gotta strip that corn if you're going to have some corn on the cob. Number 18. In August 2023, Lynette went so far to email the mayor of my Ohio town, who knows me very well, and to complain specifically about me and my partner and threatening us. Wait. Now, hold a second. Why in the world would Lynette message the mayor of Ohio if we don't live in Ohio? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll let the federal judge figure that one out. Number 19, Crook, Lynette, online posts calling me a child. Uh, well, you can figure it out. You got it all right. And are constant and ongoing to this day, still doing it. This behavior is escalating. They are harassing me in both Ohio and Florida. Now, to be very clear, everything I've said, everything I've posted has been legal. 
constitutionally protected speech. And we have thousands and thousands of screenshots of Crook, Lynette, Marla Hughes, Victoria Munsell. We've got thousands of screenshots of illegal, unprotected speech, okay, of what they've done. We know the laws and we stay within the laws. They are complete and total fools. You think they actually wrote that motion citing case law? They can't even figure out what's legal to say and what's not legal to say. And they illegally file these motions. Okay, all right. You know, I've, I've mentioned that multiple times. Let's keep going on. Number 20, as a result, in September 2023, in the Court of Common Pleas, in my Ohio county, I filed a civil lawsuit against Preston, Lynette, and Crook. 21, on October 10th, 2023, a final permanent civil stalking protection order was entered in Ohio in my favor against Lynette and Crook. And it gives both of those, those orders there. See attached orders from the Court of Common Pleas. And that's one of the exhibits in my motion, my affidavit in response to their motion to dismiss. Now, put yourself in the federal judge's position. Oh, uh, Jeremy is a resident of Ohio. He resides in Ohio. He has civil protection orders out of Ohio. And you're going to come into this courtroom and file a motion to say he's not a resident of Ohio. And you know because you are the person that he has these civil protections orders against. They're starting in federal court already with the judge going, can't be trusted. These two are pathological liars. Number 22. After a full evidentiary hearing in the Ohio court, issued two final orders of protection. The Court of Common Pleas uh, in Ohio, here and after the Ohio court, made factual findings that Lynette and Crook have knowingly engaged in a pattern of contact that caused me to believe that Lynette and Crook will cause me physical harm or cause or have caused already, which they have, mental distress. And there are exhibits one and two as well. Number 23, in the two final orders of protection, the Ohio court ordered Lynette and Crook to not initiate or have any contact with me or, or my residences, businesses, places of employment, schools, daycare centers, child care providers. Oh, contact includes not limited to landline, cordless, cellular, digital telephone, text, instant messaging, fax, email, voicemail, delivery services, social media which she continues to break to this day, and so does he. Blogging, writings, electronic communication, posting of a message, which they both continue to break to this day. Or communication by any other means, direct or through another person, which they literally just gave somebody a video, which breaks this civil protection order. Thank you very much. See exhibits one and two. <sighs> by the way, this is a one-way civil protection order. It is not mutual. I can initiate communication with them if I want, which I don't. They may not, okay? Uh, number 24. Also, now, well, hold a second. Some of you are going, but Jeremy, there's a Florida temporary injunction on you right now. I'm talking about through this Ohio civil protection order, all right? And as it was, as it was granted, there was no temporary injunction in Florida. And frankly, I've said it in the past, I could care less about the aspect of the injunction of no communication. We don't want to communicate with them. We don't want them communicating with us. We don't want them anywhere near us. They're dangerous. But we do need to ride on our road and drive on our road and have access to all of our property. And we need to have our firearms to protect ourselves from individuals as dangerous as these two. Number 24, also the Ohio court told Lynette and Crook they may not violate the order even with my permission, nor shall Lynette or Crook encourage any person to act and prohibit the Ohio court, which by the way, we have screenshots of that as well, which will be coming in court. Their communication with others to do things to us. And we have... We haven't released any of that yet. That may be coming this week or we may hold it back. It all depends on, it all depends on, it all depends. It all depends on what we think is wise to do before court or not. Number 25, obtaining these Ohio orders of protection was very important to me and remains so. I've never intended to remain in Florida indefinitely and I still don't. And I have no family in Florida and I still don't. And I do intend to remain in Ohio indefinitely and I still do. 
page number six. And we're only going to go through seven pages. 26, Ohio is my true fixed permanent home and the state of principal business establishment. In other words, I have multiple LLCs that have established out of Ohio. My primary business, my LLCs are both incorporated in Ohio. I intend to return to Ohio whenever I'm absent therefrom. I was just in Ohio this past weekend. I was in Ohio two weekends ago. I go back to Ohio quite a bit. Times when you know I'm in Ohio, times when you don't know I'm in Ohio. There are times when I don't want anybody to know I'm in Ohio. And so we film beforehand, I go to Ohio, I come back. So watching videos, even though Lynette and Crooks say they never watch anything, watching videos means nothing. Watching videos is not real time. I could video something from six months ago and show it to you tomorrow. It doesn't mean that's where I am on that day at that time. It never means that. Now, as you're watching this video, I recorded it the day before you saw it. So you have no idea, as you're watching this right now, you have no idea where I am or what I'm doing. Am I in Florida? Am I in Ohio? I could be anywhere. I could be in Virginia, helping my buddy with a huge storage unit. You don't know. Number 27, my Ohio driver's license is the only driver's license I have ever had. My current home uh, address is on this license. Number 28, my Ohio, Ohio property tax bill for my Ohio domicile is attached as well, which by the way, we do not get a homestead uh, break in Florida because this is not our primary residency, particularly mine. I'm the one that's filing suit. So if, if this is your primary residency, you can get a homestead tax break. I get no tax breaks whatsoever because none of this in Florida is my primary residency. Number 29, I've never voted in any other state but Ohio. I did want to vote in the local election in Otter Creek, Florida, as Lynette herself was a candidate for town hall council. And I believe she would use this position to further cause me physical harm, mental distress. However, Lynette is no longer a candidate, so I rescinded any such request to vote in the local Otter Creek election. Which again, number 29 is complete and total true. Lynette wanted to be on town council as she told Judge Grudge that she's paralyzed to her property. They can't go anywhere or do anything as they continue to violate the civil protection order. And Lynette says she wants to be on town council. Uh, you think, Lynette, you think she would do something to the people here, including me and George? Hales, yes, she would. All right, number 30, my vehicles are and always have been registered in Ohio. See exhibit number five, and they still are and they always will be. Number 31, I file my federal income taxes every year in Ohio. See exhibit six, and I have last year, this year, and it continues on. 32, my current Ohio utility bills are also attached. And what it basically says is signed, Jeremy Hales. Is there anything else here? Um, we got a ton of exhibits. A ton of them. Here's the reality. Lynette and Crook continuing to lie and manipulate and play victim in the system is only going to further set them behind in the system. A federal judge who's going to be residing over this issue is now seeing that they're even lying in their motion about where I live and about how much this has cost me so far. Not only that, they've lied in filing motions, they screwed up the motions, and they're going to be held accountable for that too. I can't wait for the federal courts to finally, finally rule on this, unbiased, impartial, and to do the right thing and protect myself and George from these extremely dangerous stalkers.